morning. I am Penny Nelson, Providence Soapery 62959, and today is Saturday. Saturday is bath day, and everyone gets a bath, whether you want one or not. And you are going to need some soap. So let me know in the comments if you would like to order some soap. I do have honey oatmeal soap, a lot of it. Well, that would be 10 bars. And this weekish, I will be giving away the honey oatmeal soaps. And this is in an organza bag, and it's a sample I usually give them away. And the reason why I give them away is because I love you, and I like to give stuff. Today's, we're going to go over snake oil. What is snake oil? Okay, snake oil is... When you add essential oil to a carrier oil, what is essential oil? Well, today we're going to talk about patchouli just a smidgen. Now, first of all, here's my disclaimer. For goodness sake, this is my opinion. You're an adult. Do your own research. I'm not an expert on anything, including myself. Anyways, I'm just trying to give you a few things in my opinion, so... Um, so there you have it. Lighten up, for goodness sake. I hope there's no essential oil police. Okay, patchouli was the first essential oil I ever knew about because I was born in 1968, and my mom always wore patchouli. So it has been mentioned to me that the patchouli might go to my head. Okay, essential oil is plants, bark, flowers, fruits, different materials that have been distilled and they are very potent, okay? So, when you're using essential oils, you would need to use them properly. That's your responsibility. I'm teaching you about snake oil today, okay? So, when you are going to apply essential oils directly to your skin, you would never deploy them directly to your skin. You would put them in a carrier oil, okay? And the recipe that you would use would be about one drop of essential oil to one teaspoon of a carrier oil. Now, what is a carrier oil, you may ask? Well, my friend, you could use any type of oil that you have on hand. You could go in your cabinet and use soybean oil. You could use vegetable oil, you could use coconut oil, you could use, um, you could go to the local health food store, you could go to Kroger's and buy all kinds of interesting oils. But you would still, for a safe ratio, in my opinion, want to use one drop to one teaspoon of carrier oil. So today I was going to show you how I make the snake oil. And this is my opinion of recycling, okay? The essential oils that I use for skin are the now essential oils, and I don't really have, want to have a big debate about that. I personally do not recommend ingesting. I don't see any research that says ingesting is any better, and that's my opinion, and I don't ingest. So if you're going to apply it to your skin, this will be fine. If you are going to ingest, you would need to do a lot of research. Okay. I like this part today, too. You just have to care. Hey, I care. All right, so now on to the snake oil portion of, and the reason why I wanted to train you on snake oil is because, first of all, what do you do with snake oil? What would you want to do it? Well, for the properties that, see, and this is where you have to know what your proper statements are. If there was any alleged benefits from essential oils, you would have to get the essential oils into your body somehow. So there's a couple of ways you can do that, and one way is apply it to your skin. So when you put carrier oil with essential oil, I call it snake oil, and that's because it's a joke. <laughs> Actually, the church culture I came from, even essential oils, was kind of a taboo subject. So... I do not feel it's sinful to put essential oils on your body, all things with Thanksgiving. So, 
What I am doing here is I'm going to make a big batch for my own personal use and I'm recycling this brown bottle and the point of all that is because I was going to give some to my friend Christina at work who said, I have a hard time falling asleep. Do you have any soap for that? And I said, well, and I thought to myself, you could try snake oil and put it on your forehead before you go to bed at night and worst case scenario is the essential oil will leave, when properly applied and properly diluted, would leave your body in 4 to 12 hours. It wouldn't hurt you. And if you like the smell, that would really be the only downside. So there's really not a downside. It's not synthetic. It's not chemical. So that's why you would try it. So if you happen to experience some benefits or you were able to fall asleep, that would be awesome. And what, and putting on a snake oil. So I'm going to make this and give some of this to her. So this is how I make my snake oil. Now, unfortunately, I did not um, put on the top of my jar I only put carrier oil on the date that I made it. I use coconut oil, olive oil, sweet almond oil, and it's possible that I put a little jojoba and I might have put some other things in that. And when I properly mark it with a label, even for myself, because I will have to put a label on here so I'll remember what I did, then it will have properly printed on it what I did. This is why I always mention to people that if you buy something for me, you should remember what it is, or you should keep the label, because I can't even remember what I did, so I'm not going to remember what you did. So this is zeroed out, and then I'm going to take my carrier oil over the sink, and I'm going to add it to my jar, which you can't see. And if I would have been smarter, I would have put up, I think I shall. I can't really put this on pause because my little friend's birthday is coming and I have her gift ready. I hope my scale doesn't turn off. And the reason why you do it is because I'm going to show you the math. So you just put your oil. And when I started making soap, I also sold essential oil by the drop and would do products at the farmer's market. So I might possibly sell some stuff if I could figure out how to do it legally. Okay, so now I'm going to weigh this. I had it zeroed. I had it zeroed, okay? And so now it weighs 96 grams. And I'm going to write that down before I forget. Lord knows by the time I get to the bathroom, I'm going to forget. Okay, let me put you on pause to turn you around. Okay, so that's my highly sophisticated chart that I got from planttherapy.com. So what you do for a 3.5% for 3 ratio is you use one drop of essential oil for a gram, in my opinion. <laughs> You can do your own math and your own research, but that's how I do it for myself. And 3.5% is the safe ratio, in my opinion. Okay, so now I'm going to take you to the bathroom with me so we can look at my essential oils and add the essential oil to the snake, to the carrier oil. Okay, now we're in the bathroom, and I get to say hello to you. Hello, and I'm going to show you where I keep my essential oils. Okay, so here's my stash. I get to get into... Those are all of my essential oils, and I like to keep them in dropper bottles. Okay, and this is a dropper bottle. Okay, this is an essential oil blend that I make when I was doing farmer's markets. And one morning, at 6 in the morning, I cleverly came up with the creative name, Penny's Favorite Blend. <laughs> it's all the creativity I had. It has... See, I don't have it labeled here, but I have it labeled. It has orange, patchouli, helichrysum, tea tree, and lavender, okay? And I am going to use that in this because I like it. But I better do logic first, if there is any. Okay, the point of all this is to help Christina, so I'm going to do half lavender, okay? So that means I'm going to do 
50 drops of lavender. This is so I can make make my recipe later in case I, I don't have any secrets. So I'll pause while I count. You don't need to count to 50 with me, do you? My friend Jada would be glad to hear that I have mostly my essential oils in alphabetical order. <laughs> okay, so that was 50-ish drops, okay? And then I'm going to add Penny's favorite blend because I like it. So I give it a smell and see how much I think I need because I've got 46, so I'll do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I always say it is my goal to get to ten and back. Now with these, I try to kind of squeeze out the, and then put it in that way because these don't last forever. It eventually tears up the top part of the bottle and then I replace it. Okay. Now lately, I have been feeling some of this. My Chang is what it's called. And I'm not good at describing the scents. It's it's kind of lemony. It's kind of lemony. So I'm going to do 10 of those because I want to. See, and I already got to write it down. I'll put you on pause while I write. I guess if you get bored, you could go away, right? I'm, I can't be worried about that. I love you. So this is the part where... I just kind of decide what I want to put in it. It kind of depends on my mood. And this is why you always have to keep what you writ you what I've written down. Because um, you just kind of go with whatever you think. It's kind of like what you're craving. So, But I'm making it for a friend. That's why it has the lavender. So... I'm going to smell the frankincense and see how that is today. Because I like that. Frankincense. It's not, it's not focusing, but it says frankincense. Hmm. Nah, I don't like it today. So now I'm going to sit here and think what I'm doing, and then I'm... I think I'm just going to finish it up with the Penny's Favorite Blend. That's what I'm going to do. So that would be math. Let's see, 70. So we have 18 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. That'll be fine for me. All right. So what did I do? Add another 18. And then, it always helps if you make your notes so you can read them later. Alright, so I've got the lavender, the my hung, and no talking abilities. Okay, so let's not make a mess. I always make a mess. See my soap I got over there? Yeah, this is my soap that Mama Cass sent me. I have a hard time using it. She sent it to me as a gift. It's a mermaid tail. And that's my soap sample the grandkids. Okay, so I just smelled it and then I'm going to put another label on it. And how you use this is you can you can use it as lotion, you can do it for anything. You apply it to your skin. That's what you do. And then the essential oils go into your bloodstream and do their thing. And if they don't do their thing, whatever they do, it's kind of like a soap idea, okay? Is um there's molecules, okay, that are circles inside of your bloodstream. And, um, oh, this is definitely the penny version. And what, the, what the, the essential oils do is they surround it and then they move it through the bloodstream. They move it out. So it could leave in the form of sweat, urine, poop. That should be about it, right? You wouldn't want to bleed out, so that'd be a bad way. It'd be in your blood. So that's how it would leave your body in the form of sweat, urine, okay? So it it surrounds what it needs to take out and <laughs> takes it out, allegedly. It has been rumored. I don't have the research in front of me, but it could do that, perhaps. All right. Whew. Okay, now... I am going to move on to the spiritual portion of the video. 
and I wanted to share this with you. This is what I call my snack. Okay, the Bible, well actually Jesus said in the Bible that he is the bread of life, okay? So I believe that because I choose to. So he said he's the bread of life. And so the bread of life is the word of God. So every day I read the Bible because I am a believer and I want to base my life. I want to be a Christian. I want to represent Jesus. I want Jesus to live through me. Okay. So how you eat spiritually, like I already ate my food, is you read the Bible. There's a couple of ways you could do that. But that's the beginning. Okay. So now on for the snack. This week, because it's February, I've been having some trouble. I've been a little low. And so... I want to think on the truth instead of thinking all these stupid thoughts. Okay. And so the point of this one is I am okay. So a lot of times when I'm having a hard time, I tell myself, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. So this is another thing you could say besides I'm okay. You save the humble and bring low those whose eyes are haughty. So my point is I want to genuinely be humble. Okay, so the promise is there, or the statement is, is you save the humble. So God himself, the judge, the creator, the master, the boss, will save the humble. So that's one thought. But he brings lows, those whose eyes are haughty. So that's another thing. What is that and how do I avoid it? So here's the statement. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. And there's the semicolon. Choose to continue. Okay, so I remember that. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. I have no ability to keep my light burning. My power runs out in a hurry. Okay, so here comes the good part. And it's a song. If I can remember it, I can sing it. With your help, I can advance against a barricade. With my God, I can scale a wall. Okay, so, sometimes I just need help to get out of bed in the morning. Sometimes I just need help to do the dishes. Sometimes I just need, I don't have a barricade or a wall, but the Bible says that this war is not against flesh and blood. It's rulers, principalities, powers, and things in heavenly places. And this last week or month or all of my married life, Richard and I have been praying for our marriage to have a breakthrough in our marriage. And Richard and I, we love each other, and he's a godly person, and, but it's a little difficult sometimes. And sometimes that feels like a barricade or a wall, and we certainly want to do it together. Anyway, that's my prayer request, and if you listen this long, that's amazing. So now it's time for me to um, pray for you because if you listen this long God knows who you are that's what providence is is um God knew that you were going to listen this long and he loves you and he cares for you and I'm going to pray for you and pray for me help thank you Lord thank you for this day thank you for um the privilege of being your child I pray for my friend who is listening right now who is going along I pray that they would Talk to you and trust you. I thank you that you say that you will help us. I thank you that you can, there's no fear in love and I'm not scared to ask you to humble me. I'm not scared, but I'm praying for my friend. I'm praying for the listener. All right, that's a hug and a kiss and All right. Fly lady says to get ready. Oh, Lord. I'm okay. Well, look at the light. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love you. I love you. I love you. Keep going. Keep going. All right. We're going to get through February together. Or, or we will. You will. I will. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You save the humble. I would like that to be me.